Last offseason, Hiroshi McCarp outfielder Seiya Suzuki was the coveted Japanese superstar making the jump from Nippon professional baseball to the major leagues. The Chicago Cubs won the Suzuki sweepstakes and gave him a hefty check worth almost $100 million over five years. And although his debut season in MLB was a bit underwhelming, he showed flashes of stardom and established himself as a force to be reckoned with in the senior circuit for years to come. And this offseason, three more Japanese players will likely try their luck at MLB. Right-handed pitcher Kodai Senga, right-handed pitcher Shintaro Fujinami, and outfielder Masataka Yoshida. So let's profile these three MPB stars and examine where their best fit would be stateside. Senga and Yoshida are definitely the bigger names, so let's start with them and then briefly cover Fujinami at the end. Drafted by the SoftBank Hawks out of high school in 2010 as a developmental squad player, Senga was by no means a highly touted prospect. But SoftBank is the wealthiest franchise in Japan, and with its advanced developmental pipeline, Senga quickly evolved into one of the most dynamic pitchers in the league. He made his MPB debut in 2012, and by the following year, he had established himself as the Hawks' setup man, posting a 2.40 ERA in 51 games with an outstanding 36.7% strikeout rate. Unfortunately, a right shoulder injury in June 2014 kept him off the mound for over a year, but when he returned in August 2015, the Hawks decided to reintegrate him into the team as a starting pitcher, as he posted a fabulous 0.40 ERA in three starts. Senga returned to the bullpen during the postseason and contributed to his first Japan Series championship, but after that, Senga became the ace of the Hawks' rotation, posting a 2.63 ERA across 983 innings with 1,017 strikeouts between 2016 and 2022. He was selected to the All-World Team at the 2017 World Baseball Classic after posting an 0.82 ERA with 16 strikeouts in 11 frames, even blowing away top MLB hitters like Xander Bogarts. He gradually increased his fastball velocity and continued to rack up strikeouts with his signature split-finger pitch known as the Ghost Fork, which Pitching Ninja covered at the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. Between 2014 and 2022, Senga upped his average four-seam velocity from 92.3 miles per hour all the way up to 96 miles per hour. That's right up there with MLB studs like Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, and Zach Wheeler. He won double-digit games every season with an ERA below three in all but one season. He won two Pacific League Best Nine awards, two Golden Glove awards, two strikeout titles, an ERA title, and even a triple crown not to mention five Japan Series titles with the Hawks dynasty. So Senga has accomplished almost everything you can think of in Japan. He even threw a no-hitter in September 2019. But what are some of his flaws? Well, health is at the top of that list. Senga has only thrown more than 170 innings in a season on one occasion. That was back in 2019 when he managed 180 and a third. His second best mark was 169 innings back in 2016, and his third best mark was 144 innings this past season. He hasn't had any major career-altering injuries, but he's just missed a bit of time almost every year with some sort of injury, whether it's his shoulder or his calf. So don't expect Senga to be a significant innings eater in MLB. And the other small flaw in his game is the command. He's had starts where he just can't find the strike zone. In fact, he's walked five or more batters in a start on 16 occasions over his career. But crucially, he did not have any such games in 2022. And in terms of run prevention, this past year was Senga's best year to date, as he managed a 1.94 ERA with a 2.59 FIP, 2.75 XFIP, and 4.9 wins above replacement. He had a 27.5% strikeout rate, right in line with his career rate of 28.2%, and he had an 8.6% walk rate, close to his career mark of 9.3%. He featured the fastball about 44% of the time, the forkball 21%, the cutter 19%, the slider 11%, and the curveball 3%. So if you can look past the fact that he's a bit injury prone and a bit wild at times, Senga is a truly elite pitcher. So plenty of MLB teams will be in on him, not least because Senga asked his organization to post him back in 2019, but the Hawks have a no posting policy. 
So Senga has been on MLB scouts radars for quite a while, but he's had to wait all this time until he's entering his age 30 season now until he finally earned his international free agent rights and opted out of his contract. There are some rumors that the New York Mets, Los Angeles Dodgers, Texas Rangers, and San Diego Padres are all interested in his services, though these are of course just rumors. I also personally think that the San Francisco Giants, the Boston Red Sox, the Chicago Cubs, the Minnesota Twins, and the Philadelphia Phillies would all be pretty good fits. So wherever Senga ends up, I wish him all the luck. I think he's going to have a very successful MLB career. Okay, let's move on to Masataka Yoshida. Yoshida just led his Oryx Buffaloes to their first Japan Series title since the Ichiro Suzuki-led Blue Wave won it all in 1996. Unlike Senga, who we've known has MLB aspirations for many years, Yoshida's request to be posted comes as a bit of a surprise. And as of the morning of November 9th in Japan, John Morosi is reporting that the Oryx Buffaloes are likely to post Yoshida within the next few weeks. Granted, Oryx will reportedly attach some conditions to this. What those conditions are, we don't know yet, but what we do know is that Masataka Yoshida is a phenomenal hitter. Ever since he was drafted in 2015, Yoshida has done nothing but rake. He missed time in each of his first two seasons, but from the very beginning, it was clear that Yoshida is one of the best pure hitters of this generation. He is the Tony Gwynn or Stan Musial of Japan. He finally got a full season of games in 2018 and hit 321 with a 956 OPS. The following year, he put up almost the exact same numbers with a 322 batting average and 956 OPS. He had a career high 350 average in the pandemic shortened 2020 season, and he had a career best 1008 OPS in 2022. You get the picture. Yoshida is like a machine with the consistency, and it seems like he's only getting better. Between 2016 and 2022, Yoshida posted a slash line of 327, 421, 539 for an OPS of 960 and a weighted runs created plus of 176. In fact, he's been top 3 in the league in OBP for 5 straight seasons. So he hits for average, he gets on base, and he hits for power. But Yoshida's biggest strength by far is his ability to put the ball in play. His career strikeout rate is below 10%, and his career walk to strikeout ratio is an astonishing 1.4. That's 421 career walks to just 300 career strikeouts. And over the last three seasons, Yoshida has been top 7 in MPB every year in swinging strike rate. This past year, he whiffed just 5.1% of the time and only swung at 22.4% of pitches out of the zone. Those are both elite marks, and he's only 29 years old. But what are some of Yoshida's flaws? Well, he isn't a great defender, and he doesn't run the bases very well. He's played a handful of innings in center field before, but really he's just a corner outfielder, and he's played mostly left field the past few seasons. And although advanced defensive metrics aren't always 100% accurate, it does paint a pretty clear picture. Going back to 2020, Yoshida has accumulated a negative 11 ultimate zone rating in left field, so he was mostly reduced to a DH role this past year. And though he isn't necessarily a slow runner, he's also had a negative in the ultimate base running metric in each of the past four years. So as long as you don't count on Yoshida to make highlight reels with the glove or steal double digit bases a year, then he's a stud. Now, where would some good fits for Yoshida be if he is indeed posted? Well, as always, the New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox are expected to feature, but Yoshida's favorite player is Bryce Harper. So much so that he even put Harper's name on the back of his jersey before. So the Philadelphia Phillies would also be a fit. Granted, it would be pretty difficult to fit him into that outfield with a couple of defensive liabilities already in Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos. Honestly, any MLB team should be in on Yoshida, but they will have to pay a posting fee as they did with Suzuki last year. Alright, let's finish off with Shintaro Fujinami. Fujinami is more of a wild card. He was drafted the same year as Shohei Otani back in 2012, and when he debuted with the Hanshin Tigers as a teenager, he looked like one of the best young arms of this generation. He made four consecutive All-Star teams between 2013 and 2016, and he was really taking over the league for a while, with a flaming fastball and a wipeout slider. But ever since late 2016, Fujinami just hasn't been a very good pitcher. 
He moved between the top team and the farm team, and he moved between the rotation and the bullpen, but nothing really seemed to fix his problems. His erratic command just kept getting worse, and his secondary stuff lost the edge it once had. So why on earth would Fujinami want to be posted now, at the low point of his career? Well, the raw stuff is definitely there, and even with his decline in performance, the strikeout rate has been pretty consistently above 23%, so maybe a change of scenery would be good for him. He even touched 100 miles per hour on the fastball just a couple of years ago, and he did change his repertoire up this past year by throwing the split finger more, and he had his best season in half a decade, though that's a pretty low bar. Plus, for all of his deficiencies, he does keep the ball in the park very effectively. So, if a pitching savvy MLB org like the Tampa Bay Rays or the San Francisco Giants get their hands on him, maybe they can figure out a way to best utilize Fujinami's obvious talent. I wouldn't personally bet on that happening, and I think there's a decent chance that Fujinami ends up back in Japan next year, but I would definitely like to see what the former star can do out of the bullpen in Major League Baseball. Okay, so there you have it, Kodai Senga, Masataka Yoshida, and Shintaro Fujinami. It's always bittersweet when an MPB player leaves for MLB because I would love to see them finish their careers in their home country, but I also want them to live out their dreams of playing on the biggest stage in the world. So, which of these three stars do you want your favorite team to sign this offseason? Special thanks to my patrons, Chris J, Jonathan Greenberg, Hinosato Yaku, Poker Pack Rat, Corgi Racing, Anthony Peng, Jake Royce, Marcus Hill, Ua Bird, Ryan Fox, Jeff W, Char Aznable, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, Christopher Woods, Samantha Garave, Yuki Samarine, Kud, Jem Morelos, Gabriel Foss, Kurt Berglund, Eduardo Granados, Kotaro Imahayashi Kim, J1, Tom Musa, Mike Braun, Lucas Bora, Stu22, Alex Irish, Marty Mercury, PB Cow98, Tokyo Kyojin fan Dave Hackerson, Brainlet Wojak, Riku, and Joe Hironaka. If you'd like to become a patron yourself, please check out patreon.com slash baseballcosmo. Thanks for watching, please subscribe for more MPB content in English.